Many people have habits they want to break, and probably some habits other people want us to change. To make those adjustments, habits expert James Clear says we should think small. His popular blog gets 2 million visits a month. He's also a frequent speaker at Fortune 500 companies, and his work is used by teams in the NFL. Major League Baseball and NBA. Clear's new book is called Atomic Habits, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. James Clear, good morning. Good morning. Love this book. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. So to help everyone, what are Atomic Habits? Sure, so Atomic Habits was written to be the most comprehensive guide on how to improve your habits. And I chose the phrase for three reasons. So the first meaning of the word atomic is tiny or small. And that's a central part of my philosophy that habits should be small and easy to do. The second meaning is that atoms are the fundamental unit in a larger system. So atoms build into molecules, molecules build into compounds, and so on. And in a sense, habits are kind of like the atoms of our lives. You know, like they're these fundamental units, these little patterns that we repeat, and over time they become more or less our daily routines. The third reason, though, is that atomic can also mean the source of immense energy or power. And I think if you add all three of those together, you understand the narrative arc of the book, which is that if you make changes that are small and easy to do and layer them on top of each other, like units in a fundamental system, a larger system, you can get powerful results. Okay, give a specific example of, of how you do that. Make a small change and pack it with something you do regularly without thinking about you it. You say a 1% change can make exactly. a difference. Yeah, that's right. 1%. So this idea that habits are, I like to say habits are the compound interest of self-improvement. So this 1% change that you're yeah. talking about, it's kind of like, Imagine you're in a plane and you're leaving Los Angeles and you're going to go to New York. I actually calculated this. If you shift the nose of the airplane just three and a half degrees, it's like seven or eight feet on the runway. You barely even notice it, but you end up in Washington, D.C. instead yeah. of New York. Right. And habits are kind of a similar thing. You know, they're these small routines, little 1% changes, but as over time, they compound and you can end up at a very different place uh, based on them. And you say if you're having trouble changing habits, it's not you, it's your system. Yeah, That's right. That was interesting. Well, one of the core philosophies of the book is that we do not rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. And so often we're ambitious and set these, you know, uh, lofty goals for ourselves. And we wonder why doesn't it work out? Yeah. And it's because we don't have a system behind it. We don't have the habits behind the goal. And also because we set these massive goals and have no idea to break it down into its component <laughs> habits to create that compound. So, but give us a concrete example. I mean, waking up in the morning and exercising the minute you get out of bed would be one, right? Give us little habits that people can have, have put in their lives that create this bigger change. Sure, well, I mean, basically what you do is take whatever habit you're trying to build and then scale it down to just a small thing that you can do within a minute or two or five. So, for example, if you wanna read 30 books a year, scale that down to read one page um, and then after you make your bed in the morning, you can put a book on your pillow. So the routine could be, I wake up, I make my bed, I put a book on my pillow, I take a shower. Climb in at night and the book is waiting for you to read one page. Same way with, uh, you know, I wanna write a book, scale it down to write one sentence. Or I'd like to become a meditator, scale it down to meditate for 60 seconds. And are you, do you believe in the sort of three weeks of a habit actually locks it in, or do you think that's too bad? Yeah, this is one of the most yeah. common uh, questions yeah. that I get, is like, yeah. how long does it take to build a habit? Right. And uh, you'll see all kinds of things, 21 days, 30 days. There's one study that 66 days was on average about how long it took. But the honest answer to how long does it take to build a habit is forever, because once you stop doing it, it's no longer a habit. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people, the implicit assumption behind that question is, how long do I need to work until it's easy? But Habits are not a finish line to be crossed. They're a lifestyle to be lived. Yeah. And so you need to be looking for these lifestyle changes, something you can sustain. And you stress the importance of environment, saying that it can often matter more than motivation itself. You write in your book, environment is the invisible hand that shapes human behavior. Explain why that's so important. Well, so many of our habits are just a reaction to the cues that are in our environment. You know, you walk into the kitchen, you see a plate of cookies, and you eat one. You don't even have to really be hungry. Right. You know, it's just but the cues there. there. Instead, instead, maybe, right? Yes, so that's a good example. I actually did that myself. I used to, we would buy apples and bananas and put them in the crisper in the fridge, and I would never see them because they were kind of tucked away. Mm -hmm. And then they go bad two weeks later, and we have to throw them out. And so now we keep them in a display bowl in the center of the counter. Mm -hmm. And what? about sleep. We've been teasing all day about sleep, how yeah. to get better sleep. How do we make that a habit? So in the book, I talk about these one-time actions that lead to payoffs again and again. So here are a couple examples for sleep. Uh, you can test different mattresses and then buy the one that gets the best night's sleep for you. You could purchase blackout curtains so that you sleep in a room that is dark. Uh, same thing with like earmuffs or earplugs to be, um, you know, reduce noise. Mm -hmm. But then the, the last one and my favorite is you can buy what's called an outlet timer. 
And an outlet timer is just a little device on Amazon. It costs like $10. You plug it into the outlet, and then you plug a device into that timer. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you can plug in is a friend of mine, Nir Eyal, who also wrote a book about yes. habits called Hooked. Yeah. Uh, he plugged his internet router into the timer, and then he yeah. set it to kill the power at 10 p.m. each down. night. Right? Yeah. So internet's off at 10, can't watch Netflix, can't browse the web, time to go to bed. And you say your wife is here. We should talk to her about your habits. You, you say <laughs> reprogramming your brain instead of saying, I have to do something, say, I get to do something. Thing. Yeah. This is a great way to. I get to wake up at such and such a time. Well, so often we go through life thinking about all the responsibilities that we have, right? Yeah. I have to take my kids to practice. I have to make dinner tonight. Yeah. Um, and simply it. reframing it and yes. saying I get to helps you see the situations in your life as opportunities rather than burdens. James, there's so much good information in here, also about your own personal story, how these yes. habits helped you change your life. It's yeah. really important. James Clear, thank you so much. Atomic Habits is on sale now.